just going to show you the workaround to get um, a movie file basically out of um, uh, out of an image sequence since uh, we are having a difficult time getting it done within Maya uh, using both Maya itself or fcheck. So in this workaround what we're going to do is FF, use ffmpeg. You can download the binary uh, so you can either compile yourself from the ffmpeg site or you can download this binary that somebody has provided for you to download. Um, in this example, I'm on 10.7 here, so I just downloaded the Snow Leopard one um, here. Just went to download. And what the binary version essentially is, is a self-executable -execu file that contains all the packaging already in it, so you can do your conversions. Um, I won't go through this website, but this is just a man page um, for all your flags and commands for FFmpeg. I'm going to be, I'm going to use a simplified version of this, but you can get fairly gnarly stuff uh, using FFmpeg to convert anything you want into anything you wish, essentially. So, uh, in this example, I'm just going to minimize this now. Um, I'm just going to clear this because uh, it's just my last test. Uh, what I have is FFmpeg in a directory. You can put it anywhere you want. I just happen to put it into uh, the desktop. And I have my project folder here as well, which is the FFmpeg test uh, directory. So in the file here, we just have a quick uh, animation of uh, a sphere floating around, 90 frames of that. And in my render settings, what I did is um, instead of, this was key here, obviously the image format, you can pick whatever you want. Uh, TIFF uh, seems to be a nice format to use. Um, generally, a lot of people tend to use uh, this one right here, which is name dot the frame number and then dot extension, in this case, TIFF. Um, FFmpeg has a hard time dealing with the two dots in your file name. So what I suggest doing for these examples or while you're, you're doing this is to use the name underscore number, frame number, and then uh, extension. That way you can keep things clean and you still have things in order. Uh, depending on the size of your, your sequence, this one's only 90 frames, so I could probably got away with uh, frame padding of two, but I used four. So you're just going to get a lot of zeros at the end. Uh, and then when you render, uh, I'll go back to that finder again. Here it is. Oops. Hey, you can see you got your four, four number padding here, a lot of zeros, and all the way down to 90. So we're pretty much set to uh, essentially come into your terminal, type in the command, and get an uh, MOV output. Now we're not going to do anything fancy. It's going to be a straight uncompressed output. Um, of the sequence straight to an MOV file uh, with a specific frame rate that you wish to use. So here's the last one I used. I'll quickly explain what's happening here. So uh, I just pipe in FFmpeg. Um, in this case, I'm sitting in some other directory, so I had to go and type in the full path to that directory. FFmpeg, then I have the rate. So this is the key. This is the important part that seems to be uh, messed up to begin with. Uh, I know in your case you want to use 30, so I'll put in 30 here. I have the input file to the directory, and the key here now is to m control this frame padding. So uh, in the FFmpeg they use the percentage sign and then the value of what that frame padding is. So in this case it's 4, so I put number sign, 0, 4, and D, that's just the way they, they need to read it. Then dot the uh, image format. Okay, so you'll have pretty much the same file name. So I'll put underscore, and then the only thing that changes is this uh, 04D to, so FFmpeg knows how to go in there and grab these numbers in sequence. Sorry, grab the images in sequence. And then you just have your output. Um, in this case, uh, if I control C, it's just going to output it into the directory I'm currently sitting in, which is users assist desktop FFmpeg test, which is where my project is. So if we go ahead and run this, it's going to be very quick. Uh, nothing much to it. It's going to do a strict conversion of, I'd render these at 1K. So essentially that's where you're going to get as an MOV file. So once you double click on them, hit play, you will have a uh, 30 frame per second output. You know, if you wish to test this out, uh, we can actually do, uh, let's say, video one, and we'll do, uh, I don't know, five frames per second. 
and you'll see that's going to be one, a larger file, and uh, two, longer sequence. So here it's 16K for the original 30 frame per second, 25K for the five frames per second, and if you double click it, it's now 18 seconds instead of three seconds. And you can see it jittering because it's now slowed down so much that it doesn't look pretty. But that's uh, essentially it. Thank you.